Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, we are going to perform an experiment. The aim of the experiment is to determine the viscosity of a given unknown liquid with respect to water at laboratory temperature by Oswald viscometer. What is called viscosity that I have discussed in detail in my previous video and the link of that video I will give in the description box. I will give the theory of this experiment as well as I will show you the lab activity related to this experiment one more thing which i am going to discuss here in this video is why the oswald viscometer is having that kind of shape that is very important and interesting to know about the oswald viscometer let's start with the video so if you want to write that experiment in your notebook so here i have given all the procedure and all the points which you need to write down so here what is important why we are doing this experiment with respect to water secondly why laboratory temperature is important and the third point is the shape of the oswald viscometer so before discuss about all these points let me tell you what glass apparatus and other equipments are required for this experiment so what we require rubber tube pinch cork oswald viscometer liquid 1 that is distilled water and liquid 2 that is 10 percent glycerin solution now i am going to tell you how to prepare 10 percent glycerin solution so i have taken 10 ml glycerin in the measuring cylinder we read the lower meniscus and now i am going to transfer this in 100 ml measuring flask now i will rinse this measuring cylinder thoroughly two three times and will transfer this to the same measuring flask and i dissolve it thoroughly now we are making up this solution up to 100 ml and now this is our 10 percent glycerin solution we will see the lower meniscus here each mark now I will transfer it into the reagent bottle. So this is how we are preparing the 10% glycerin solution. So after requirement, I am going to tell you about the theory. So since we are going to measure the viscosity, so what is called viscosity? The force of friction which one part of the liquid offers to another part of the liquid is called viscosity. So what is called viscosity? This is one viva question. For measuring the coefficient of viscosity, Oswald viscometer method is used, which is based on the Poiseuille's law. Now, question is what is called Poiseuille's law? The scientist Hagen Poiseuille given a law to measure the viscosity, and according to this law, the volume of a homogeneous fluid having eta viscosity passing per t time. To a capillary tube having L length and R radius at P pressure can be expressed as here is the formula to determine this eta coefficient of viscosity. Eta is equal to pi R raised to the power 4 T P divided by 8 V L. Here is the viscometer and V is the volume of the liquid in ML flowing out of the capillary tube. T is the flow time through capillary in seconds. R is the radius of the capillary in centimeters. L is the length of the capillary in centimeters. T is the hydrostatic pressure. So, this hydrostatic pressure we are going to discuss in the coming slides. Eta is the viscosity passing per time. This is in centipoise. Most of the time, student forgot this formula. So, there is a trick. That is very funny, but you can relate and remember that. Measuring the viscosity per time t. So, here is the viscosity and t is on the numerator first. Secondly, the liquid is flowing through capillary and uh, it, which is having radius r. So, pi r will be there. And the next term you can relate this p. This 8 you can termed as s. So, p s 
this L and first we can write the L and then we can write the V. So P S L V. This is very funny. There is no relation actually, but that is okay to remember this. So eta is equals to pi r raised to the power 4t p s l v. And in our previous video, we have already discussed that the viscosity we are determining for the laminar flow. And here I am summarizing the conditions of the laminar flow. So for the laminar flow, the direction of the flow velocity is parallel in the parallel layers. To understand this statement in detail, you can go and check my previous video. The flow velocity should be low and the radius r of the pipe or we can say the capillary must be under a critical value. So what is this critical value that can be determined by the Reynolds number. So what is that number? The Reynolds number is given by this formula here rho v r divided by eta. So here rho is the density of the liquid, v is the velocity of the liquid, r is the radius of the pipe and eta is the viscosity. So for laminar flow, the value of the Reynolds number is under 2100. But if it is more than 4000, then the flow will be turbulent flow. This is important and from here, we are going to measure the critical value of the radius for the pipe. Based on these conditions, the Oswald viscometer is like that. The pipe should be long enough and the outflow should go to a wider reservoir which already contains the fluid. This is the Oswald viscometer. This is the bulb B. This is the bulb A. This is the length of the capillary. And here you can see the east marks. Here. And here again, so this is the volume up to which we have to measure the time of flow. This is the capillary of radius R. Now, as I told you earlier, that P is the hydrostatic pressure. So, what is called hydrostatic pressure? It is represented by H, D and G. What is this H, D, G? H is the height of the column. So here height of the column, D is the density of the liquid and P is the hydrostatic pressure which is the driving force for the flow of the liquid. If we see that pi, R is the radius, V is the volume and L is the length, these all parameters are constant for a given Oswald viscometer, then this viscosity is proportional to P into T. P is the hydrostatic pressure. If we put the value of this P, HDG into this equation, then we will get eta proportional to D, G, H and T. If we want to determine this viscosity absolutely, then we need to know all these parameters. Otherwise, we can determine this with respect to some known liquid. So that is why I told you in the aim of the experiment that why we are doing this with respect to water. We, these all parameters are known, not known to us then we can determine it relatively. So here if we determine with respect to water then eta 1 proportional to density of the liquid 1 T is the constant, H is the constant and T is the time of flow for the liquid 1. And similarly we can determine this for liquid 2, T2 T, H and T2. So if we divide both the equations then we will get finally eta1 upon eta2 is equal to T1, T1 upon T2, D2. Where liquid 1 is water, liquid 2 is 10% glycerin solution. There is not the condition that this is the liquid 1, this is the liquid 2. You can interchange also and you can change the solutions also. To measure the equal volume through this capillary, we need to read the time of flow between these aged marks. So here is the procedure and I am not going to read this because this is just for your writing purpose. Now how we are going to measure the density. So first we will weigh this density bottle. This is 21 and now I tear this. So afterwards whatever be the weight that will be the weight of the solution only. First, I will weigh 10% glycerin solution. So, this is 30.391.
now we will fill it with distilled water now i must tell you first note the laboratory temperature and now the weight which we have determined through this experiment are as follow so here weight of the empty density water this is relative density is 21.621 and since i tear this now i need not to subtract so weight of the water is equal to 29 so weight of the density bottle with water you can either determine since i have teared the weight of the empty density bottle so here i am having just weight of the water and again weight of the density bottle plus liquid you can either determine that since i have teared so i am having the weight of the liquid 3 only so 30.390 and take the density of the water so density of the water is given at 20 degree centigrade it is 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter so if you didn't tear then you have to write like this d1 upon d2 is equal to w2 minus w2 minus w1 so you will get the weight of the water on w3 minus this w1 then you will get the weight of the sample liquid but since i tear this so these are my weights so i can write down in this manner here d1 upon d2 this is my w1 and in that case this is my w1 and w2 so weight of or you can write down weight of the water and weight of the sample liquid density of the water is this so in from this equation after putting all the values we can calculate the d2 so d2 is equal to 1.025 grams per cubic centimeter now i will tell you how to do this experiment so here is the viscometer we will suck from bulb b to bulb a here you can see the each mark so up to this mark we have to fill this now we will adjust the rubber cork so this is one way you can fill your Oswald viscometer. This rubber cork actually to maintain the constant pressure. Here you can see we remove our finger and this liquid we this liquid is not moving at all. So this is how we can maintain the pressure, right? So if we lose some pressure, this liquid will start moving. Now we fill it. and we will start measuring the time this here you can see the liquid is moving through this capillary now we will fill this oswald viscometer with 10% glycerin solution so first we will fill this bulb and then we can transfer this liquid to the bulb a and then we, this finger you can see here to this we can maintain the pressure and here we are going to measure the time in which this liquid is flowing here you can see the liquid is flowing the level of the liquid is so it is flowing now the observation table and the time of the flow which we have determined from this experiment that i have kept in the table so here since i have taken one readings only so the one reading is there if you take two three readings then you can take the mean of that value right so here we are going to put all these values in the formula eta1 upon eta2 is equal to t1 d1 upon t2 d2 and here we are going to determine this eta2 so all the values this is t1 t1 is liquid one is water and t2 liquid two time of flow density we have already determined for water it is 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter and d2 is 1.025 grams per cubic centimeter here eta1 eta1 is what viscosity of water at given temperature so here i in the aim of the experiment i have mentioned there that at the laboratory temperature since this viscosity is temperature dependent on increasing the temperature viscosity decreases so here viscosity of water at 20 degree centigrade is given this much centipoise and at 25 degree centigrade it is given 
zero point nine one centipoise. So since the laboratory temperature is twenty degree centigrade, so I have taken this value. Now I am putting all these values here in this equation, and I'll just get the value of eta two. Here is the eta two, and here is the result at twenty degree centigrade. So don't forget to mention the temperature of the laboratory and before the answer. Now I am going to tell you about the effect of pressure and temperature on viscosity. So on increasing the temperature, viscosity of liquids decreases, whereas for gases it increases. And on increasing the pressure, the viscosity of liquids increases. I hope you understand whatever I discussed here in this video. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.